Step into a world where time seems to slow down, where the gentle rhythms of a small town weave a comforting tapestry around you. As you journey back through the corridors of memory, does your mind conjure the images of a quaint little town named Mayberry? Can you feel the warmth of the sun-kissed streets and the charm of its residents? Perhaps, like many, your first encounter with the 1960 TV series, The Andy Griffith Show, was a serendipitous stumble upon the heartwarming tales of Sheriff Andy Taylor and his endearing band of companions. Remember the resonance of the opening tune, that mellifluous whistling that instantly transported you to a place untouched by the hustle and bustle of modern life. It was a show that whispered of simpler times, a window into a world where community bonds were tight, laughter was abundant, and life's wisdom was found in everyday moments. And oh, the characters. Sheriff Andy's calm and collected demeanor, Barney Fife's endearing bumbling, Aunt Bee's nurturing presence, Oppie's innocent wonder, they etched themselves into the canvas of your mind, didn't they? How could you forget those moments when they tugged at your heartstrings, made you chuckle, or left you with a tear of nostalgia? But now, let us journey together through the lesser-known avenues of Mayberry. Did you know that Don Knotts' portrayal of Barney Fife was so remarkable that it earned him five Emmy Awards? And the iconic whistle in the show's theme was composed by the talented Earl Hagen, who was inspired by his own son's whistling habits. Picture this, the show's setting, Mayberry, was inspired by the hometown of the show's creator, Andy Griffith himself. The fictional town became a reflection of his fond memories, and his desire to share the essence of his upbringing with the world. So, as you sip your beverage of choice and relish these random tidbits, take a moment to recollect the laughter, the warmth, and the life lessons that the Andy Griffith Show gifted you. It's a journey that encapsulates a time gone by, a reminder of the enduring power of storytelling to shape our perceptions and evoke our emotions. Intrigued, delight in more such hidden treasures as we unravel the anecdotes, trivia, and behind-the-scenes tales from the heartwarming world of The Andy Griffith Show. Aunt B's West Virginia Roots, a tribute to Don Knotts Morgantown, W.V. the quaint town of Morgantown, nestled in the heart of West Virginia, holds a significant connection to the beloved 1960 TV series The Andy Griffith Show. While the show's iconic characters and idyllic setting have charmed audiences for decades, an intriguing link between Aunt B and Deputy Barney Fife has come to light. Aunt B, portrayed by Francis Bavier, was originally scripted as hailing from Morgantown, W.V., a detail that pays homage to the birthplace and upbringing of actor Don Knotts. The endearing bumbling deputy, known for his comic timing and endearing quirks, was a product of Morgantown. Notably, Knotts, a cherished member of the show's ensemble cast, graduated from West Virginia University, located in the heart of the very town that inspired Aunt B's character. In a nod to the indelible Mark Don Knotts left on both Morgantown and television history, the town has immortalized the actor in various ways. A statue paying tribute to Knotts now graces a prominent spot in Morgantown, capturing the spirit of Barney Fife's unforgettable antics. Moreover, a local street has been christened Don Knotts Boulevard, a dedication that underscores the lasting impact of his talent and charm. As fans continue to revel in the timeless humor and warmth of the Andy Griffith Show, Morgantown stands as a living testament to the show's legacy and its connection to the beloved character of Aunt Bee, who, in a twist of fate, shares her origins with the lovable deputy who stole the hearts of viewers across the nation. In a delightful twist of family connections, fans of the Andy Griffith Show may be surprised to learn that Don Knotts and Ron Howard shared more than just on-screen camaraderie. Unbeknownst to many, the iconic comedic duo were actually sixth cousins, tracing their genealogical roots back to a common ancestor, Lucinda Knotts. This familial link adds a charming layer of history to their memorable performances on the beloved 1960s television series. While the fictional town of Maybury was known for its close-knit community, real-life family ties extended beyond the storyline. As viewers tuned in to witness the hilarious antics of Barney Fife, and Opie Taylor, they were unwittingly witnessing a familial connection that spanned generations. The bond between Knotts and Howard, enhanced by their distant yet shared heritage, undoubtedly contributed to the chemistry that made the show an enduring classic. Amidst the heartwarming tales of small town life, the Andy Griffith show also showcased the talents of Clint Howard, the younger brother of Ron Howard, who portrayed the endearing character of Opie. Clint Howard made recurring appearances as the peanut butter and jelly-loving cowboy, Leon. 
This casting decision not only added an endearing quirk to the show's ensemble, but also solidified the Howard family's presence within the Maybury universe. As the annals of television history continue to preserve the legacy of The Andy Griffith Show, the unexpected familial ties between its beloved stars serve as a testament to the show's enduring appeal. The series, with its heartwarming narratives and iconic characters, remains a treasured piece of American television culture, a reminder that, both on and off screen, family connections can create truly magical moments. In the annals of television history, few shows have captured the essence of small town life as effectively as The Andy Griffith Show. And now, with the revelation of the Knotts Howard ancestral connection, the show's legacy takes on an even richer dimension, weaving together the threads of family and entertainment in a way that only the world of Maybury could. So, the next time you find yourself immersed in the delightful antics of Maybury, remember that behind the scenes, a sixth cousin bond between Don Knotts and Ron Howard was quietly adding another layer of charm to the timeless narrative. In the iconic 1960 TV series The Andy Griffith Show, a mysterious transformation occurred behind the scenes. The character portrayed by Hope Summers underwent a subtle yet significant evolution that went largely unnoticed by viewers. In that initial season, she assumed the identity of Bertha Edwards. However, as the show progressed into its second season, her moniker shifted to the more familiar Clara. Notably, Clara referred to her late spouse as Mr. Johnson during this phase. But the transformation did not end there. In a twist that might have perplexed even the most dedicated fans, the character went through yet another name change. Eventually, she settled into the identity we remember today, Clara Edwards. This curious evolution of nomenclature highlights the fluid nature of character development within the series. As the quaint town of Maybury unfolded on screen, a subtler narrative thread weaved its way through the opening credits. In a moment often overlooked, Yon Opai, portrayed by Ron Howard, picked up a rock during his stroll with Andy. A seemingly innocuous action, this act of youthful curiosity held a deeper connection. Years later, Andy Griffith himself made a surprising revelation upon watching this scene. Unintentionally, he had been imitating a nod of approval from his own father, a gesture that had now found its way onto the small screen. While the majority of the show's residential scenes were captured on the eastern expanse of the Culver City lot, where the iconic Aunt Pitapat house from Gone with the Wind stood, a lesser-known enigma remained. Thelma Lou's residence and several other incidental homes for minor characters found their place in a trio of unassuming bungalows across Lillian Way from DeZillu Studios in Hollywood. This mystery locale, hidden in plain sight, lent an air of authenticity to the show's evocative setting. In the heartwarming world of The Andy Griffith Show, where simplicity and charm reign supreme, these hidden layers of transformation and connection added an extra layer of intrigue. From character evolutions to unintentional nods of familiarity, the series proved that even within the quaintest of settings, unexpected stories await those with a discerning eye. Speculation surrounding Barney Fife's middle name on the Andy Griffith show in the quaint town of Maybury, where the charm of the ordinary meets the eccentricity of its residents. One enigmatic question has perplexed viewers of the beloved 1960 TV series The Andy Griffith Show. What is the true middle name of Deputy Barney Fife? While Barney's middle name has been subject to playful banter and shifting declarations throughout the show's run, it was in the episode class reunion that an intriguing revelation emerged. A Maybury Union High School yearbook disclosed his middle name as Milton. However, this revelation wasn't without competition. In the episode titled A Plaque for Maybury, Sheriff Andy Taylor seemed to remember Barney's middle name as Oliver, creating a tantalizing inconsistency. The whimsical uncertainties surrounding Barney's middle name captivated fans, giving rise to a fan-fueled debate that has endured for decades. Was it Barnard P. Fife, Oliver, or perhaps Milton? The ambiguity became a testament to the show's endearing mystique. In the end, the enigma of Barney Fife's middle name remains a charming quirk within the tapestry of the Andy Griffith show. It is a testament to the show's ability to keep its audience engaged not only with its heartwarming narratives, 
but also with the delightful puzzles it sprinkled throughout its episodes. So, while the truth of Barney's middle name may forever remain just out of reach, its legacy as a source of speculation continues to add a layer of intrigue to the timeless series. As fans of the Andy Griffith show continue to revisit Mayberry and its lovable inhabitants, one thing is certain, the mystery of Barney Fife's middle name lives on, a playful reminder of the show's enduring charm. As we bid adieu to the nostalgic streets of Mayberry and the heartwarming moments that adorned each episode of The Andy Griffith Show, we find ourselves not merely closing the chapter of a television series, but rather tucking away a treasured piece of Americana into the annals of our memories. The show's sepia-toned charm and wholesome tales acted as a mirror, reflecting the simpler times and genuine connections that we often yearn for in our fast-paced world. As you contemplate the fond echoes of Sheriff Andy Taylor's wisdom, Oppie's earnestness, Aunt Bee's culinary delights, and the mischievous escapades of Barney Fife, take a moment to traverse the corridors of your own experiences. Perhaps it's the echo of laughter shared with loved ones while gathered around the television set, or the recollection of life lessons learned from the show's gentle narratives. Whether it's a faint smile that curls at the corners of your lips or a wistful chuckle that escapes your lips, The Andy Griffith Show has undoubtedly etched its mark in your personal tapestry. It's a show that, much like a cherished family photo album, deserves to be revisited and celebrated. So, dear friend, I invite you to share your cherished memories, the anecdotes that have nestled in your heart, and the reflections that this timeless series has evoked. Your experiences are the threads that continue to weave the legacy of The Andy Griffith Show, bridging generations and kindling a sense of unity through the years. Thank you for embarking on this journey down memory lane, and for allowing the wholesome charm of Mayberry to touch your life in its unique way. Your time and interest are truly valued, for it is the collective appreciation that keeps the spirit of such shows alive and thriving. Until we meet again to share more tales of yesteryears and present joys, remember that the echoes of Mayberry are never too far away. Warm regards, your name.